Lord, and praise the Lord. Let's go Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so thrilled and honored and thankful, Lord. We can come and hear your word and fellowship one another and with you. And we thank you, Father God, most of all for Jesus, that you gave us your only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth him shall not perish but everlasting life. So, Lord, we thank you for our salvation, deliverance, and redemption all through Jesus Christ. And, Lord, we pray for our nations, our leaders. You said in your word, I exhort therefore that, first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, giving of thanks, be made from authority over us. So, Lord, we thank you for our president, and vice president, and senators, and congressmen, the legislators, Supreme Court justice, federal, state, local judges, governors, mayors, police officers, the armed forces, the FBI, and the CIA, the AHS. <clears throat> Lord, we claim your salvation, deliverance. We ask you, Lord, to send laborers across their path to minister the gospel to them. If they've received Jesus, praise the Lord. We thank their eyes are standing to be enlightened about who they are in Christ. And we thank we speak peace to our nation. We decree and declare our nation is a righteous nation, cleansed and covered by the blood of Jesus, the Jesus the Lord of the United States of America. And Lord, we pray for all the nations of the world that every nation has a gospel preached as a witness. And then they should come. We ask you, Lord, to send laborers across each person's life to preach the gospel to them. We thank the Lord for all those missionaries out there. They preach your word in season now. Thank you, Lord, for anointing them and equipping them to do the work of Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, that every one of their needs are met in abundance in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we pray for all the body of Christ. That each and every believer becomes baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in other tongues, being taught about who they are in Christ, and going forth in this life, ruling and reigning in Jesus. And we give you all the praise and glory. And I thank you, Lord, for anointing me today, that I'll be able to say and do what you have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me under the Holy Ghost. And I pray, follow us, Lord, as we hear your word. And here from the Holy Ghost, we'll go forth and become doers of word and led by the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Okay, let's turn our Bibles over here to the Gospel of Mark. And we'll start here in Mark chapter 11. Now, the Scripture says here, Jesus taught us here, beginning in verse 23. Jesus said, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever saith in this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in the start, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall but shall say it. Now verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things shall desire when you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. Now these are two ways, as believers, we can release our faith. One way is by speaking to mountains. Mountains are problems, situations that, that arise in your life. An illustration of this is in here in Mark chapter uh, 4. This is where Jesus taught the sower sows the word. And when he got done ministering, the scripture says here in, in um, verse 35, And the same day uh, when he was come, he saith to them, Let us pass over into the other side. And when he said the way the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were with, uh, also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the way he's bitten the ship, so it was now full. And he, Jesus, in the hind part of the ship, sleep on a pillow. And they wake him and said, Master, carest thou not be perish? And he rose and rebuked the wind and said, The sea, peace be still. And when the wind ceases, it's a great calm. He said, that, Why is it you're so fearful? It has you no faith. Now notice here that when they told Jesus about this, Jesus spoke to the wind, spoke to the waves, said, Peace be still. And everything obeyed him. Now Joshua did this essentially here in Joshua chapter 10, when he spoke to the sun and moon and told it to stand still. And it obeyed him. Now here Jesus is showing us here how to use our authority. As the believers, we always want to speak to something first. When anything rises up, the first thing we want to do is say something to it. Take authority over it. In other words, today we say in the name of Jesus. Like David did when he came against Goliath. David came against Goliath with his covenant he had with God and the name of the Lord God of Israel. Now, as believers, we always want to engage our authority that God gave us in the name of Jesus. Jesus' name is above every name. The Bible says so in Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 through verse 11. Scripture said, Wherefore God has highly exalted him, and given him a name is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, things in earth, and things on earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ the Lord, the glory of God the Father. His name is above every name. Jesus said, Go in all the world, and in my name cast out devils. We exercise our authority that God gave us in Jesus' name over the devil, over circumstances, negative circumstances, things that come to steal, kill, and destroy. So Jesus taught us here in that verse 23 of Mark chapter 11 that we can speak to mountains. Mountains are problems. Remember Jesus said in Luke chapter 17, verse 6, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say in this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou cast seed, and it should obey you. Notice that it will obey you. Now, as believers, so often we didn't use our authority. 
And, dig, and, and the first thing happened was that we got taken out over some or became very destructive. No, what we want to do as believers is always engage the authority that God gave us by speaking words out of our mouth. The sword of the Spirit coming out of our mouth when anything rises up. And by doing so, we're exercising the authority that God gave us. Now, sometimes Christians don't like hearing that. They, they'd rather blame everything on the Lord or on God. Anything happens is God's will. That God's in control. He's running everything. And there's been great divides in the church over that. But you see, God didn't stop Adam and Eve from eating the fruit. He told them not to eat it. And it wasn't his will. They did eat it. But nevertheless, they chose to, just like you and I chose to do what we did. Well, it wasn't that God stopped us. Sometimes I wish he had it, but it wasn't that God stopped us. He gave us a free will, a choice. We can choose to be born again or choose not to be. The choice is us. Remember, remember the scripture says in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, God said, I call heaven and earth to record this day that I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life. He gave us the choice. Jesus said, I stand at your, your heart of your, of your, the door of your heart, knock it. If any man open up, I'll come in. And Jesus taught us in Matthew 18, 18, Verily I say to you, what's the reason shall bind earth, shall be bound in heaven? What's the reason shall loosen earth, shall loosen heaven? We've been given authority of this earth. Now God owns it, but he gave us dominion over it. And we're to exercise that dominion in Jesus' name. It's like if you lease a building, you don't own it, but you're responsible for it. Well, as a believer, we're responsible to use our authority that God gave us in Jesus' name. And take authority of things. That's why Jesus taught us to speak to mountains and problems and situations that rise. And take authority of them in the name of Jesus. And that's why it's important for us as believers to always speak God's word. And take authority of the situation. Refusing it. Stopping it. Not allowing it. Not accepting it. Binding it. Taking authority over it in Jesus' name. And Jesus taught us here to speak to situations. He showed us there in Mark chapter 11 how to do that. Even when the temptation came to Jesus. In Matthew chapter 8 and Luke chapter 8, Jesus said, it is written. He spoke the written word of God to the devil. Think about this. Jesus used three scriptures from two chapters of Deuteronomy and ran the devil off. And the angels came and ministered unto Jesus. Now what are we to do as believers? Is engage our authority, speak the word in Jesus' name. When lack comes, speak to it. If fear comes, speak to it. If depression, oppression comes, speak to it. Say, no, in Jesus' name, I refuse this. I don't accept this. It's written. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and sound mind. Put on a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. Now, we do that in faith. We may not feel like doing it. It may look totally opposite of what we're saying. But if we'll hold fast to our profession of faith or our confession, then we'll, we'll gain the victory in this situation. We have the name of Jesus, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And we're decreeing and declare what God's Word says about us. That was the difference between David and his brothers and Saul. They all had the same covenant. Is that David used his. David went towards the problem, using his covenant in the name of the Lord God of Israel. That's how he succeeded. He used his covenant. He used the authority that God had given him. Now his brothers didn't, and Saul didn't, and the children of Israel didn't. But David did. And Caleb and Joshua spoke what they wanted. Caleb said, let us go up and once and possess it, for we're well able to overcome it. But the people chose to believe the ten spies instead of Caleb and Joshua in Numbers chapter 13 and 14. Now who lived for another 45 years to take the promised land? We call it the promised land. The land that flowed milk and honey. Caleb and Joshua. They talked different than everybody else. Now think about what happened to the church in the wilderness. They all died off because of what they said. They said, would to God, we'd have died in Egypt. Or would to God, we'd have died in the wilderness. And where'd they die? They died in the wilderness. All of them, except the children. Except Caleb and Joshua. And they got to go in and possess the land. And Caleb said, there in Joshua chapter 15, he said, I'm just as strong today as I was 45 years ago. Now we got Joshua speaking to the sun, the moon there in Joshua chapter 10 and getting it to stand still. And then we have Caleb who said, I'm just as strong as I was 45 years ago. Let me go. I'll go up at once and take it. Give me the land. He's still talking the same way as he did in, in chapter earlier in Numbers chapter 13. He held fast his confession of faith. See, people think it's preposterous as believers that you have what you say, but we got born again that way. 
that if thou shalt confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, or thy mouth, and believe in heart, God is raised dead, thou shalt be saved. Confession is made unto salvation. But many dear Christians, they, they, you know, they got ill feelings against confession. They don't, they don't like to hear about it. I mean, they, they'll turn the preacher off as soon as they start talking about it. I know I've traveled a lot. And been in many churches and preach and have to get through all that. Not every one of them, but many of them. Once too many. And you'd have to plow through all that. You know, they're sitting there thinking, well, if I'd known that, I wouldn't have came today. Well, you know, okay. But nevertheless, you'll have what you say. Death and life, the power of the tongue. And think about that. The Bible says there in Psalm 118, verse 17, I shall not die, but live, declare the works of the Lord. Now this is the psalmist here facing the challenge in his health. And what he decreed, I'm going to live. Jesus taught us that death and life are the power of the tongue. The words I speak, their spirit and their life. Out of the bun's heart, the mouth will speak. A man's justified by the words of his mouth. Or condemned. It makes all the difference. Our body, what we say. It makes all the difference about what we say about our body and our mind, our finance, our life, this world. We can talk about the woes or speak the word, the situation. It takes just as much energy to use our authority or not to use our authority. We're going to be talking anyway. Why not speak God's word and take authority over the situation? That doesn't mean you're not going to be testing trials because you always speak God's word but you, and you'll have challenges, but you can live victorious. And get through all those challenges. See, so often people are hoping that the person that's positive or speaking God's word do fail. So they can point their finger at that and say, see, now look at that. You see, now they didn't get it. Well, that's not a, you know, that's not a, our favor to talk that way about other believers. You know, we, we don't discount salvation because more people don't get saved than do get saved. No, we, we still preach Jesus Christ, him crucified. I mean, think of all the people in the world that's not saved. Does that prove that salvation is not for everyone? Well, certainly not. We go forth and preach the gospel anyway. And believe God, the people receive Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. And as believers, what we want to do is just every day speak God's word and praise God and thank God we are what his word says we are. I mean, when I heard Mark eleven twenty three, 23, it is a few days before I want to say something because I begin to realize that what I've been saying is what's been coming to pass in my life. I've been speaking words of death and life. Well, now I, I learned that I need to start speaking God's word. And I got thrilled over Mark eleven twenty four. How about you? Where Jesus said, therefore I say to you, what things are desire when you pray? Believe you receive them, you shall have them. Think about this. What things are you desire? And people think, well, maybe, you know, it's, God doesn't mean you have it. Well, do you desire it? The Bible teaches us that, you know, we became new creatures in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away, but old things become new. Our spirit, man, is so perfect when we got recreated in Christ Jesus that the Holy Spirit came and dwelled in us. See, our hearts are not evil. No, our hearts are right with God because we have Jesus Christ in us. And what we want to do is realize our Father God gave us all these things. He made us an heir of Abraham's blessing. He doesn't want the church to live in poverty or barely get by or live in some kind of commune. No, he wants us to go on all the world and preach the gospel of every creature. Now, people did choose to give up what they had. And some people chose not to receive deliverance, the Bible says in Hebrews 11. But that was their choice. We don't make a doctrine out of that. We know what Jesus did for us and receive all that he did for us. He gave his life so we could have life. He not only gave us eternal life and everlasting life, but he gave us abundant life. And he wants us to enjoy this life. He wants us to, he didn't come in our life to make our life harder. He said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Learn of me. We need to learn all that Jesus did for us and receive it and act accordingly to it. He says he wishes above all things that we prosper. Then that's God's will for our life, that we prosper financially. There's nothing wrong with money or material things. It's the person that has it. You know, I know people that's very, 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 very wealthy, and they're the same as they have been all their life. They're still generous people. It didn't change them at all. And what happens with people, you know, many times, you know, they look for a reason not to receive their healing and not to receive prosperity. It's like people look for a reason not to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. Many of us could have got born again before we did, but simply because we chose not to. Can you remember people coming and witnessing to you? I went to church regularly, faithfully. And people came and talked to me outside of church about being born again, about being saved. Have you received Jesus Christ, the Lord? They made me uncomfortable. They agitated me. They made me angry. I kept telling them I go to church. I couldn't see the importance of becoming saved. And they kept giving me scriptures. 
Well, the Holy Spirit would bring that back to my memories. Then I need to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord. Well, it wasn't uncomfortable at first, but thank God it did it, you know. Well, all that God has, it belongs to us in Christ Jesus. And he wants us to enjoy this life and live a prosperous, healthy life and live victorious. And we can if we learn what Jesus did for us and begin to accept God's promises and the facts of God's word. Like healing is a fact. It belongs to us. Jesus took our infirmities. He, he bore our sicknesses and diseases. God placed them upon Jesus when Jesus was beaten. And then Jesus took the curse that was on mankind. God put, upon, put that upon Jesus when Jesus was crucified. So not only Jesus took our sins, and not only Jesus took our punishment to sin, but he also took our sick and diseases and poverty and lack. Because all those were curses of the broken law. They came upon mankind through sin. But Jesus took all that. He was willing to do this. And thank God he did it so mankind could be set free. But so often we were told that God didn't want us to prosper. That God doesn't always heal. God gets glory of you being sick. We had all that planted inside of us. And then when we heard, by his stripes were healed. And we heard that God wants to prosper and have good health. Well, see, it was a little difficult for some people to receive it because they heard so much against it. And now what we have to do is unlearn those things that we were taught that were wrong and learn God's word, the truth of God's word. And enjoy the benefits that Jesus bought and paid for and freely gave to us. It was Jesus that said, Therefore I say to you what things soever you desire when you pray, believe you receive me, and you shall have that. It was Jesus that said, Whether you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Either to you have asked nothing in my name, I ask you shall receive that you join me. Before. That was all Jesus' idea. It was Jesus that taught us we could have what we say. And this had been the truth all along. Throughout the Bible, you begin to see people that would use their authority. And, in, and today we would say, in the name of Jesus. Jesus gave us his name to go forth and occupy in this world. Jesus defeated the devil, conquered him for us, and gave us the victory over him. And he seated, Jesus did, he seated us in heavenly places with him, far above all principal and power. Because, because we're in Christ Jesus, we can do what Jesus did in his name. Not because we did something and earned it. Or we became so spiritual or such good people. No, all because what Jesus did for us, he freely gave to us. Because of Jesus, it was his idea to follow the plan of God. He came said, I came to this earth not to do my will, but the will of him sent me. And when Jesus went to the cross, he was willing to do that so we could become born again. So we could live in victory. So we could have divine health. Not just wait till we get to heaven and thank God for that. But he wants us to rule and reign in this life. We're more than conquerors in this life. And the Bible teaches us that, that we need to go forth and rule and reign in Christ. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. As believers, we're always triumph, always live in victory. That doesn't mean we have challenge, but in the midst of those challenges, tests, trials, whatever you want to call them, you want to keep speaking God's word and praising God and thanking God that you're delivered, that you're redeemed, that you're healed, that you're prosperous, that you're blessed in Jesus' name. And keep focused on the promise of God. It's not easy on the flesh to keep on fighting a good fight of faith and cast down imagination and continually praise God and thank God. But it's important for us to do so. To maintain the victory that Jesus bought and paid for, he freely gave to us by keeping ourselves totally convinced that this is God's will for me. That's why it's good for you and I every day to read promises of God's Word. To remind yourself, this is what the Word says. This is what belongs to me. This is what Jesus paid for and freely gave to me. This is what God wants me to have. This is who I am in Christ Jesus. And every day, we're faced with challenges, you know, fear, doubt, and unbelief, worry, confusion. They come to everybody. But we can resist them, and we should. Using our authority by thinking, no, I, that's not what the Word says. The Word says, I, I have the mind of Christ. The Word says, I can do all things through Christ. The Word says, my God supplies all my need, according to rich glory of Christ Jesus. The Word says, Christ has redeemed and cursed the law. Be made a curse for me, for a curse for any tree. Thank God for all those blessings that Jesus freely gave to us that was in Abraham's covenant. And Jesus gave us a better covenant, established on better promises. So we have all the dual covenant had. There was a blessing and much more because we have a, a better covenant. We have Jesus, who is a better sacrifice. And thank God for that. And this was all God's idea and his plan. 
It was God that he wished above all, said that he wished above all things that we prosper. It was God that gave his people the power to become wealthy. And he gave us that by giving us a covenant, by giving us authority, and teaching us to speak his word. Remember what God said there in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8? This book of law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to according to all that's written there. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Now who brought up the term prosperity and success? It was God that wants his people, his children. You know, if you have children, don't you want them prosperous and healthy and good success? And have good success? Of course you do. You don't want them to go through life without anything. Well, God loves us much more. You know, if we being natural know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more should our Father give good things to them to ask? So often people didn't receive what Jesus did for them. Just like so often people didn't receive salvation when they heard about being born again, about receiving Jesus Christ Lord. And many people, that makes them angry, especially if they're real religious. And you tell them about being born again. I mean, it made me upset. I mean, if you grew up Catholic or Protestant, someone else come along and tell you you need to be born again, you don't like that. You get very angry over that and upset over that. And you talk to other people about it. And you avoid all those born-again Christians, friends that you've got, or relatives that you've got. You stay away from them. You don't like it. But thank God they, they were there to plant seeds in their life about salvation. To let us know that Jesus is the way to God. Not some other way. Not being good. Thank God for being good, whatever that be. But everyone have their own interpretation of that. But there's only one son that God had, Jesus Christ. For God loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. The new sir believers shall not perish, but everlasting life. And what person receives Jesus, they receive that everlasting life. And they receive all that the Father has. It belongs to them in Christ Jesus. That's what Jesus said about the prodigal son. When this father said to him, all that I have is thine. That boy could have had it all along. But look at his attitude. He was miserable. He was angry. He was upset and judgmental about what his younger brother did. And oftentimes that's what happens when people try to become self-righteous by their good works. They look down their religious nose, so to speak, at people that's not as good as them. And think, look at them. They don't do what I do. That's what the Pharisees and Sadducees would do. And the religious rulers, they would find some in adultery or find some reason to blame Jesus for healing on the Sabbath. And get upset at him. Well, there's six days in which men ought to work, and then therefore come be healed on the Sabbath day. And that's how they acted. Here the lady's been bowed over for 18 years or bowed over like a, like a hunchback. Living this way. And Jesus set her free. And look what her minister did. He got upset over this. And rebuked Jesus over this. And Jesus said there's six days that the, the religious ruler said there's six days in which men ought to work in that therefore come be healed on the Sabbath day. And Jesus said in verse 15 of Luke chapter 13, Thou hypocrite, do an actual on the Sabbath day loose his ox or ass, stall, lead away to water, and ought not this woman? Being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound low these 18 years? I didn't know that. I didn't know Satan did stuff like that. I never heard that in church, that Satan did those things. I just was always heard that people were born this way. That it was God's will that people had this condition. But Jesus said, and ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound low these 18 years, been loose bound seven. I was sick for 18 years, over 18 years. And I heard that scripture there in Luke chapter 13, verse 16. That liberated me. It, it changed my Christian life about divine healing. I didn't know Satan went around and did things like that. It was Satan that smote Job with sore boils in Job chapter 2, verse 7. It was the, the messenger of Satan, the thorn in the flesh was Satan that came against Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. It wasn't God's will that these things happen. We're told to resist the devil. How do we resist them? By speaking the word. How did Jesus resist them? By using the word, speaking the word. Today, again, we do that in Jesus' name. Begin to decree and declare. And instead of accepting the sickness and the pain and discomfort and poverty and lack and problems as though it's God's will, that he's trying to work out something in your life. He's not trying to work out something in our life. When we got born again, we, we were complete. We are complete. The Bible says so in Colossians 2.10. We're not trying to become complete. We are complete. We are holy. We are sanctified, unblameable, unprovable, unreprovable. In God's sight, the Bible says in Colossians 1, verse 22. But we didn't know epistle letters. You know, many of us hung around the Old Testament. 
and in the Gospels. We didn't know who we were in Christ Jesus when we got born again. And many times we weren't taught that. Well, when a person begins to know who they are in Christ, they can go forth in life ruling and reigning in Jesus' name. Decreeing and declaring what the Word of God says. Now it makes people upset, but hey, they're going to, no matter what, it's just best you follow God and, and use your company. It makes David's brothers upset because what he did when he showed up and came against Goliath. We know your, we know your pride, they said, and naughtiness of your heart. Think about this. He's speaking his covenant, and that's what they're saying about him. Look at the people that came against Joshua and Caleb and Moses and Aaron. They're going to stone him. They said, we can they're telling Moses and Aaron, let's go up at once and possess it. We're labeled. But they couldn't persuade the people to do it. And many times Christians were persuaded to receive all the Father God has through Jesus Christ. They went without and suffered in life. Things that God never tended for them to suffer. Suffering situations in their life that Jesus suffered on the cross. All because you couldn't persuade the Christian, the believer, born again person, that God wanted them healed. He wanted them delivered. He wanted them to enjoy life and live a prosperous life. And they begin blaming their problems upon the Lord. Well, God did this to me. Hurry he allowed it. He's, he's trying to work out something in my life. No, he's not. If he didn't want us to have good healing or good health or he didn't want us to receive healing, he never placed our sick disease upon Jesus. If he didn't want to forgive us, he wouldn't have put our sins upon Jesus. But he did. There was a reason for that. So we could enjoy this life, not just wait till we get to heaven and be worth it all. Thank God for going to heaven. But God wants us to rule and reign in this life. That's why he made us kings. That's why he made us priests. That's why he made us ambassadors. That's why he made us more than conquerors. That's why he seated, the right, seated us, the right hand of God the Father, with Christ Jesus. That's why he recreated us. That's why he gave us world overcoming faith. He gave us the victory. And we have that in Jesus' name. No, the Father God wants us to, to be a blessing to people, but only that, to enjoy all that he had that he gave us, and receive it. Not reject it, not think, well, now maybe God doesn't let me have this. No, that's not the way the Father God is. He wants us to enjoy everything in life, because he loves us. If he didn't withhold Jesus, thank God he didn't. He's not going to withhold anything else. Romans chapter 8, verse 32 told us so. If he gave us Jesus, God's not going to withhold anything else. Father God, we pray today, we thank you, Lord, for Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for our new covenant benefits and blessings. Lord, I pray for everyone watching. I thank everyone their needs are met in abundance in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you received Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Maybe you're not sure. Or maybe you know you've never done it. Let's do it today. I'm going to read these scriptures here from Romans chapter 10. Read three scriptures. Then I'm going to ask you a prayer. Prayer was made to receive Jesus Christ, the Lord. The Bible says here in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, verse 10, and verse 13, that if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart God is raised dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart... Man believes right, the mouth of confession means salvation. Verse 13 says, For whoso called the name Lord shall be saved. Real simple to receive Jesus. The gospel is simple. It's Jesus and Jesus only. Pray this with me. Mean it with your heart, and you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord. Then you have a guarantee when you do die, you go to heaven, not hell. God, I come, just say this. God, I come to you today to receive Jesus Christ, my Lord. I confess my mouth, and I believe my heart, Jesus is the Lord. I believe Jesus crucified took my sins on the cross, took my judgment to sin, died on the cross, was buried, and God, you raised him dead. Jesus, I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. And God, I thank you for saving me and giving me your only begotten Son. Thank you, Father God. You're my Father, and Jesus, my Lord, from now on. Amen. You prayed that prayer, good for you. I'd like to hear from you. You could email me and let me know that you received Jesus Christ, your Lord, today. And if you got a prayer request, you can also email that prayer request to him. If you're not receiving our newsletter, you're going to definitely want this one coming up. You should be getting a lot, uh, probably less than a week. It looks like this when it comes. Envelope, number 10 envelope. And then also we get our Divine Healing Scripture Sheet. That's in this next letter. Divine Healing Scripture Sheet. You can get that and start reading it on a daily basis. Keep your, help keep, keep yourself built up in God's Word. Also, we have our phone conference night. Church on the phone at 7 o'clock. That phone number and access code should be right here on our Facebook page at Just Rich Ministries. And then if you got a prayer request, you can, as you call in, you can give or stand with you and believe God with you and pray with you or about your prayer requests you got. I would encourage you to let other people know about how you're enjoying our Facebook messages. We're also, these messages are also uh, loaded up to YouTube. And you subscribe to our channel and get a notification when a new one comes on at Jesse Rich Ministries. It's free. Take advantage of it. It really enjoyed being today. I consider it a privilege and holy honor that you watch today. Till next time, it's Brother Rich Mind. I love you. I'm praying for you. And remember, Jesus is always more than enough.